Can you hear me? I mean, please, can you move? Get a joke. That's fine. Three rules. Yes. One, two claps. Okay. Back as far as I want, right. or go back to the team. Yeah, that's fine. You can Which way do you think I should go? I <laughs> mean, <laughs> 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 this is my line. This is the fifth time I say that. Please, can you move this way? No, 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 no. That way. In English, this is left. <laughs> <laughs> If you don't go to Great Britain and play in all these great golf courses, you're, 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 they're going to put you in a pine box and you never fulfilled your obligation. Woosby, there's a man with a big heart. If, if he passed away, you wouldn't be able to transplant his heart because no other human would be able to carry it. I've always dreamed of winning this tournament and uh, I just hope I can win it before I, I finish playing golf. You're going to talk in English, somebody transfer. Testing my contact lenses here. <laughs> you laughing, it's coming to you one of these days. <laughs> now the golf course is, is really in great shape. Anytime you have a chance to play in a major, you always get pumped up and excited. Nick! Hi, Mom! Nick! Come on, Nick! Come on, Nick! Please, Nick! Your producer's got you doing a lot of strange things. You're chasing people through the car park. <laughs> I feel good about my game and myself. And you know, tomorrow's gonna be another day. It's gonna be rainy and it's gonna the wind's gonna be blowing, so we'll deal with that then. I can see it. Do you know, isn't it? Martin, you should lighten up on these guys. You really should. You shouldn't make them work so hard. Yeah. It gets the uh, adrenaline going. That's the whole idea. You don't want to be, it's not nerves, it's just adrenaline. You just want to be, you know, you're fired up by it. Very trusting to stand there with an American driving on this side. Hey, neighbor! What's going on? What is it, neighbor? <laughs> you ready to get out of here? Price, I'll go come one next week. I don't care. <laughs> My biggest target uh, right now, and uh, I don't know what uh, it would mean, but uh, I'm sure I'll be very happy if I win it. It has taken the very greatest men in golf to triumph at Royal Birkdale. Peter Thompson won the first and last of his Open titles here. Arnold Palmer conquered horrendous conditions to win in 1961. Then it earned him just £1,000, but it was his persona that was to launch golf into its vast money era. Thank you. Thank you, sir. This is very, very lovely. Thank you. But I haven't given you the money. The exotic Mr. Lou lost a dramatic final round to Lee Trevino in 1971. But he's only got this one to stay 15 up. <laughs> you hardly believe the evidence of their eyes as it goes in. Today I was playing with Lou. He can't speak no English, and I don't speak no Chinese, so we, we, were, we were having a lot of fun. In 1976, we got our first sight of a 19-year-old Spaniard, Severiano Ballesteros. What a great amount of pleasure this young man's given us this week. The title, though, eventually went to Johnny Miller. Oh, no. But that's a great round for Miller. Tom Watson won the last of his eight majors here in 1983, playing a miraculous two-iron to the last group. Supreme, superb. What can you say? Those shots make champions. Oh. 
So, for the 156 players qualifying to play these famous Lancashire Lynx, there was the chance to join an impressive list of the game's legends. Uh, looks a bit grey and dreary at the moment, but at least it's not windy and it's not raining. The first day's play of the 120th Open Championship. We're looking forward to getting the first one away. <laughs> at 7.15 precisely, Gary Evans, a young amateur from Sussex, hit the first drive of the 120th Open Golf Championship. Over the next nine hours, the world's best caught up. US Open champion Payne Stewart, his playing partner, Greg Norman. <laughs> Defending champion Nick Faldo was celebrating his 34th birthday. Ian Woosnam has stolen Faldo's master's jacket already and makes no bones about wanting to complete the double. Tom Watson was part of a strong American challenge that included Mark Karkovecchia, the last American to win the Open. Jose Maria Alatabal is widely considered the best player without a major title. Sevi has plenty and doesn't see the weather conditions getting in the way of his lifting another. There was no doubt that the weather was disturbing, even unnerving some of the others. Nicholas is to save his par, 12th green. Oh, that is a little one. Stadler. No, oh, he hasn't hit it. Norman for a par at the 16. Oh, slides by. God, they're finding it difficult. The greens kind of scare me. I just, I'm a little bit unsure of them. Uh, I find that some of the greens have some different speeds to them. They're very dodgy on the, the three foot putts or around that. You don't know if the ball's going to go in or not. He's missed it, he's missed it, and that's another one gone. They were polite before they started. That's another shot drop for Stewart, goes to one over. Jamie Spence at the last, and that's sadly, well, if he holds that, it'll be a seven for a round of 70. Gary Player. There was some good golf, of course. A fair slice coming from Scotsman Brian Marchbank. Oh, pretty good. Oh, it's gone in, it's gone in. A one, the first of the championship. Faldo, too, enjoyed a respectable opening round of 68, two under par. He enjoys that, I think. And why not? That's a simply magnificent stroke. Longish one for a birdie. It's on its way, it's on its way, and finally he gets one. It's been a frustrating day. Well, if he can get down in two, he'll... Or one, maybe. But as open tradition so often dictates, the first day was dominated by unsung heroes. Martin Gates, a qualifier from Surrey, American Ryder Cup player Chip Beck. And Spain's Santiago Luna all took advantage of the good weather later in the day to post three under par 67s. But behind them stalked a genius with an armada of followers. Hold one from 
Here, and it comes in down the slope, down the breeze, and a birdie two for Seve. Two under, just four holes left. I uh, feel that my swing is, uh, is good at the moment, and uh, I'm very pleased. Oh, I say he's going to have a putt for an eagle three here. I think I know how to manage this golf course. A three it is. He picks up two shots, goes to three under for the day, shares the lead. This is a great golf course. You know, still anything can happen. It's only the first round and still a long way to go. I have a very big advantage. I think I have the, the gallery behind me, which is it's like uh, having uh, 15 clubs in my back. I was thinking I was going for two parts, but uh, as soon as I hit it, uh, you know, it was looking great. <laughs> it wobbled on and strode onward, helped by the breeze, but in the end, it's a 66, and that leaves the championship. Day one. Well, this is only the first round, still a long way to go. Uh, uh, I would like to see the, uh, the conditions uh, very much like today. There's one thing that I would like to see. Tough conditions. Seve certainly got his wish. Teeing off before most of us had taken breakfast, the Spaniard had the worst of the weather. Oh, that's away. He's looking. That's up to the right. There's bushes over there. Well, that's in the lap of the gods. I would birdie putt. And so many have missed this to the right, but not Harwood. That's a two. Takes him to two under. Back over the 16th green and the bushes, and there's Seve, well to the right of where Palmer hit his miraculous shot those years ago. Well, I see bushes and travel and uh, photographers and people <coughs> and everything except the, the green. When I get in travel, I feel that the people, seems to me, they get familiar with that. Yeah, it's left because you push it, that's why it's left. <laughs> Everyone likes to be right there to see what, what is happening. Oh. They like it that end, and why not? The wait was worth it. That's a superb shot from where he was. Awkward pitch, and a great shot. Great, great shot. Well, this isn't the easiest stroke in the world. There's quite a steep bank, as you can see, the pin not far on. Oh, he nipped it. He really nipped that. That's a splendid stroke. And if he gets away with a five, well, it's like he picked up a shot, not dropped one. A five. As the conditions improved, the scores came tumbling down. Bob Tway came home in 66. He's got another one. <laughs> Australia's Peter Senior wielded his long putter to good effect with a 67, the same score as Andrew Oldcorn. Downwind, he's got there, he's got there, and straight in the middle. Colin Montgomery played some solid golf in his 69. Well, it wasn't lying very well, and he perhaps deserved that touch of fortune off the bank. Up for a three. Former English amateur champion Roger Chapman managed a 66. To level par, Eagle three. And American Gary Hallberg became a joint leader with a 68. It's there. 
Four, three, birdie, birdie. Two under. Share of the lead. Lovely way to finish, eh? But for Faldo, day two became a nightmare. A five over 75 all but finished his championship. Mm, well, save the club, it really was a horrid spot, but a golfer of his caliber should have done a bit better, I think. Don't break them. Strange, second to 17. Bounce to the right, a bad bounce, two or three bad bounces there, and, well, an inch to the left, and that might have been very, very close. Trouble off the tee, fluff down here in three, so this to drop a shot. And it's not one, it's two. The simple game that once was golf, steering a ball from tee to hole, is no longer simple. Now, though the applied sciences of metallurgy, ballistics, and analysis provided by Apollo's test center, a familiar site on the European tour, are now set up here at Birkdale. The top players even have their practice shots stored on video and then dissected. Oh, this is this is the best for golf, you know, until the people see what he's doing. Once you see, it's very difficult to make swing changes, you know. An inch feels a mile at this game. You've got to exaggerate whatever you're trying to do very much. And this is where you can look back and see that you're not exaggerating. The cult, the contortions have gripped the greatest. I mean, it's nothing like it used to be. And David Ledbetter can hardly be contradicted when he says it isn't as it used to be. It actually looked like you had more room here in your Exactly. When you get to know a person, you can, you can start to maybe guide them and hint in certain directions. But, you know, you can't just change somebody totally because they've got there for certain reasons and they, they're great players, are great players for different reasons. I was lost. My, my swing was lost and I, I didn't know what it was doing. And, uh, and I needed somebody who could piece it all back together again and uh, give me the confidence that he knew what he was talking about. And uh, it's his qualities he has as a coach. I mean, he, uh, he's able to, A, see it, so a very good eye, to spot the problems, uh, communicate it well, and, and, he, and then the key that he's worked so hard on is all these silly little drills. The player can get so mechanical and gets to a point where he just can't swing because he's thinking so much about his golf swing. So what you're trying to do really is simplify it to a point where they have one or two little things which then, you know, acts as a catalyst for the rest. 113 players qualified for round three. The biggest ever cut for an Open Championship with Ballesteros and Grady, the only major winners on the leaderboard. Other big names were still failing the Birkdale examination. Oh, that must have been a horror. It's going back into the other bunker. And this is looking an ugly and an expensive finish. Second tee woos him, he's hooked it. That's away right. left. Right. Chance for the boy might be all right, but it's back into the breezes and anything crooked gets, uh, well, problems get accentuated there. He's two over par. For Richard Boxall, the 1991 Open Championship ended in agony. Not many golfers in history have succeeded in actually breaking their left leg driving from the ninth. I'll see the second. Awkward little chip. He's played it very, very, very well. <laughs> well, he'd be a bit unhappy it didn't go in, but my goodness, he played us an exquisite little stroke there because it was downhill all the way to the pin. He'll save his bar, stay at level. DJ Singh still there. Oh, look at that. 
marvellous shot. Hit it into the little bank on the edge of that green. Up for a three. I was second shot. They made this sixth hole a little easier by bringing the tee forward. Lots of complaints on the first couple of days about it not being fair. It's fair now, though, isn't it? Look at that. Look at that. And in a minute, he'll have that for a three. Three under par, and right in the thick of the Open Championship. Baker Finch at the 17th, two putts for a birdie, one for an eagle, and of course, uh, coming off a joint first last week, and well used to the pressures of the Open Championship now. <laughs> only one required, goes to three under. And he's going to be out late tomorrow. Maybe even in the last group once again for the second year in succession. Tee shot at the 12th. Oh, what a spectacular shot. What a glorious tee shot. Three on, straight as an arrow. <laughs> has to walk to the side of the tee to see the ball behind the pin. Now, a little lucky with his tee shot, he's jumped that right-hand bunker. They like it up that end, and why not? Why not indeed? That's a simply beautiful shot. Flirted with the bunker, took the driver off the tee, and has been rewarded with a little bit of luck and a fine stroke to follow. Back at the 12th, and across the slope, and in she goes. The man who really hasn't done much since losing the PGA a couple of years ago, the US PGA, that is. He doesn't miss many of those these days. That's a very fine round of 64. Ties the old course record. Possibly you could say a new one with the one or two alterations we've had here. Great round of golf for Baker Finch. And what's more, leads the championship. O'Meara at the 16th. This is fourth shot. He's fluffed one pitch already. Oh, that's a much better effort. Much better. Oh, he nearly saves his par. He'll get away with a five. And, well, not too much damage. Prince Andrew, he's picked a nice day to visit the Open Championship, a budding 15 handicapper, I gather. Two good shots to the 17th, so this for an eagle for O'Meara. And he gets it. And more than makes up for the mess he made of 16. Three under, one hole left to play. This for a three, then. Yeah. He gets it straight in the middle, and like Baker Finch before him, finishes 3 3, but this time for a round of 67, and a share of the lead with Baker Finch at four under par. Levy's second to the last. He's been quite lucky there. Good lie in the rough. Now, that bunker you can see ahead will block his view. That's a bit left. View from the crowd and then the applause. We'll know he's been pretty lucky. And he'll also know that it's pretty close from the shouts and the screams and the hollers. 
<laughs> I think he knows he was a little fortunate there. What a three this would be, eh? I don't think you can complain, old boy. I really don't think you can complain about a four at the last. It might have been five, it might have been six. As it is, it's a four, it's a round of 69. And a two under par, he's right there, should anyone fall to tomorrow. I'm going to play as, as hard as I can tomorrow, and I'm going to concentrate as, as much as possible, and, uh, and I'm very confident. The leaders, they, they have the pressure, and they have to hang on, and it's always very, it's tough to be in the lead, you know. Rarely has any top golfer spoken with such confidence, almost challenging fate. Britain's fans and writers went with him. The bookmakers took cover and dropped their final day odds. Open this year, sir. How old are you? Seven. Uh, Barry Lane. He's a personal friend. I have no idea, sir. I know I'm not. Get out of the way. <laughs> I'd like to see Mark Lemire, I think, not only because he's an American, but uh, I think because he's, he's overdue. He's a very, very good player. Oh, one of the Australians. One of the Australians. Which one? Uh, um, Norman. Big Norman. Came and Dash, because he's from Ireland. John Watson. Why? Because we're from Kansas, that's why. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's anybody's guess. But everyone was forgetting a man named Ian Baker Fitch. Oh, let's go. Well, Ian's been playing very good this year. He's had a great year this year, and uh, if anybody, uh, yeah, I'd have to pick Ian. So the weather's going to stay the same today, same about the same as yesterday. Two, please. Sam. Sam's gonna be there. Yeah. Hey, Graham. Thanks, mate. Hi, Graham. Okay. Can you shine this up? Yeah, See you later. Go get it. Go get it. Go get it. Muted applause, he's looking a bit anxiously. Right hand side, depends on the line. Uh, not really the star he would have liked. Huge crowds will follow him. Second shot. He gave that a bit of a go. He's looking to the left. Hmm. I applauded, but it's not really very good. He's not even on the green in three. Two under becomes one under and is never to improve. History recalls that only one man in similar circumstances has pledged to win the Open and done it. And that was Max Faulkner back in 1951. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the final game of the 120th Open Championship. On the tee, Mark O'Meara. Ian Baker Finn. Oh. 
The only man in the last few groups to take a wooden club off the tee and rewarded with a long and very straight shot. The British Open to me is the World Championship. Every time we play a golf course over here for the Open, they're, um, they're great courses. Everything about it is just if you're positive and thinking nice thoughts about things, you, you're going to do well. He's got it on line, could have done with an ounce more. A little unlucky with his bounce off the bank. It's for another birdie for Mud. He's got it, seven under for the day, three under for the championship. God, for God's sake. And it's not just that shot that's gone in the bunker. That's the whole championship. Jim Payne, Walker Cup player and leading amateur, bound to be now. Second shot. Yep. Oh, great shot. And they like it. And why not? That's a real cracker. Cut for a three. I came into the event expecting to do well, wanting to do well, having played well for a long period of time now and, and uh, having my confidence get stronger and stronger. It's for a par. He's missed that one. That must be the shortest one he's missed all week. And there is the three, which he might well have had at the first. And he moves into the lead in the championship at five under. A very good start. And that's the four. That's the round of 63 for Jody Mudd. He did it last year. He came and had a 66 in the last round at St Andrews. And a new course record, whether it's the old one or the new one. And that three under sets a target for the rest for the afternoon. Second shot from the wrong side of the fairway over the bank, but it's a good one. And he's got it to stop downwind. Up for a three, another three. Well, he's hit six perfect long shots so far. And two perfect putts. Six under, two under today. And well, with all the others either treading water or going backwards, he's building himself a little bit of a cushion. Four for Amira. He stays in second place. But his partner's running away. Eamon Darcy. This for a birdie. He gets one, and that's a two at the fourth. And he's not here just for the picnic and uh, what others take the title. That's a lovely start. You can't make yourself mean, you just have to learn how to focus. Last year I said I needed to be tougher. I just needed to be tougher on myself or focus better or not let the outside influences trouble me too much. I was going to say he's finally got one. Now leaves it short online. Looking like one of those days. Mirror for his par at the fourth. Yeah. He drops one. He's three adrift of his partner. <laughs> Having started level. And of course, Baker Finch still with a birdie chance after that great tee shot. He's got a putt for four shot lead. The only negative thought I had was that when I got to to four or five under early in the round, I thought, well, boy, you better not stuff up from here because <laughs> you really cop it. <laughs> He's got it. What a wonderful start. Four, three, three, two. Three under for the day, seven under for the championship, and leads by four. Pretty couple's long putt for a birdie at the 10th. He's held a few of these in his life, and he's got another one. <laughs> Well, 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 he was walking after it long before it fell in. The 
notorious sixth and reduced to a drive and a medium iron and a putt for another birdie. What a wonderful start he's making. At the other end of the field, another Australian, the man that started it all, finishes with, well, that's a drop shot, that's a round of 66, though. But once again, it's a championship of might have beens for Greg Norman. fourth birdie in six holes and a stretch of the course that most of the golfers think is the, the difficult part, one of the difficult parts, certainly. Get it. He's done it. Four birdies in six holes, four under for the day, eight under, leads by four. Well, only he can lose it now. Last couple of rounds. About 15 mile an hour wind every day, actually good practice for here. Mark and I are very close friends and uh, we're the same sort of people. Um, both very happy for each other when we hit a good shot or, or did well. And uh, we both said it as soon as we saw each other this morning in the locker room, we said, wow, that's great. You know, great draw. Let's go and do it. Doubles for another day. He has got that too. He has two in a row. Goes to three under par, and he's not that far out of things now. Certainly for a good place prize. Try and hold it. Try and focus totally on holding the shot, even though it's, it sounds unrealistic. And that's five out of seven. Would you believe it? Two fours for an outward 29. And the way he's playing, you might actually say two threes for 27. Couples on the 12. And another monster goes in. Well, he's only got to go on doing that and he'll win. One putt for green. Doesn't matter where they are on the green. <laughs> Mike Harwood, second shot, ninth hole. Level par today. That might not be for long. Two for shot. For three, it's another birdies out in 32, and you can't ask for better than that. Five under for the championship. 13th green, couple's got another one. And indeed, he has got another one. Four in a row have gone in, and that's the shortest of them. Five under par. Harwood at the ninth. Really is a very short one. That's a fine out with nine of 33, one under for the day, four under altogether. And up the 18th comes Faldo, the defending champion. He'll hand his title on. It hasn't really been his week. The putters let him down. Oh. Well, eventually all good things come to an end. That's the first drop shot of the day. Couples at the 15th, another birdie oh. chance. Ooh. And those were going in like shelling peas before. And a three for Harwood. It takes him to five under. Lucky to find that lie off a wayward tee shot, 16. Great recovery, great result. And when you saw the ball in the air off the tee, you'd be delighted to be that close in two. Pete won with Greg Norman in 86. He's, a, a, I think, the best caddy in the world and, and is highly respected amongst all the other caddies for the job that he does. He keeps me... Uh, thinking that it's nothing too special, just go and do your business, it's just another round of golf. Doubles for a three. And suddenly the magic's gone. They were flying in all over the place. Just a four. The 
this for a two at the 12 for Vega Finch. This would repair the blemish of the drop shot at 10. Get in. Get in. Oh. Now, just the batter's cooling a little bit after all the heroics of the front nine. It's going to be a three, a par. Another hole safely negotiated, and of course, on his own admission, Baker Finch finds winning difficult. But three shots ahead, six holes to play, could be enough. Third shot of couples at the 17th, and he'll have that for a birdie. His putter, too, has cooled a little bit. And a bit like Baker Finch, he finds winning difficult. Just to save his par. No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. Pick the putter up, and a shot gone. The short 14th. I must admit, though, it was always very hard to visualize winning because I'd lost so many times. But I think that made me uh, try even harder. It's been a hell of a lot of uh, Saturday afternoons that I've gone into the Sunday with a chance and haven't made it. And uh, I think today erases all of those memories. finds the target. Fred Couples at the 18th, a birdie chance. Really has missed some great opportunities of stealing this championship in the last few holes. Good try, it'll only be a four, but it's a round of 64. And what might have been. So, this championship now rests with Australia. Sensational golf. I mean, first nine holes, he was putting for birdie on every hole. And it hasn't been a hole really where he hasn't putted for a birdie. If you do that really, you can't lose. Just playing great controlled golf. I'm bloody wrapped. Dude! Come on! Give up! Harwood for a birdie at the 16th. Really is looking like an Australian 1-2 almost. He's got it. He goes to six under. He moves within two of Baker Finch. And the crowds rush forward. Baker Finch pard 15, so he stays two ahead. the last testing tee shot here at Royal Birkdale and he's negotiated that safely right in the middle of the fairway. Perfect. Like that one, Petey? I love it. You like that one, bud? Love it. And why not? Right behind the pin. It's beginning to look like the victory walk. Two ahead, just to make it three. Run it down. Well, there's no point in rushing them at this stage. Four. Two ahead, two to play. Third shot of Harvard in trouble off the tee. Got to get down in a chip and a putt to keep the pressure on. Sit down. And need that for his birdie. Seve at the 18th, and the face says it all. He thought he was going to win, many of us thought he would. 
But in the end, it's just a round of 71, one under par for the championship, and the title goes elsewhere. In the hole! Long putt for an eagle. A very good one. With Harvard failing to get the putt on before him, that gives him a three-shot lead and one hole to play. Surely he can now enjoy the last hole of the Open Championship. Certain that he's going to win. Felt like I was being stampeded on the tee there. All the crowd were running up the hill and uh, I sort of swung a bit quick and pulled it into the left rough and into, into a bad lie. Well, the only side not to miss this fairway is the right-hand side. The other side is out of bounds over there. There's all the course to play with on the left, so that's perfectly safe. Three shots in hand. And what a wonderful sight. Up ahead, Eamon Darcy's birdie putt at the last. Well, it just fails. But a fine, fine championship for the Irishman, leading European. And undoubtedly, that's the best championship result Darcy's ever had. Great round of golf, great week, well done. Now, Harvard, this for a par. He's got it. A little bit of trouble at the last, but that's a very fine round of... 67, and when you're in contention in the championship, that's very good golf. He's not going to win, but he's going to come second. So now the stage is set for Baker Finch. That'll do. That's all right. It's going to be a slightly awkward pitch with the edge of the bunker in there, but... Got the shots in hand. Well, surely this time he's going to make it. He's been there before, he's suffered before, he's lost before. Watson in 83, he led and fell away badly. With Faldo last year, he was overshadowed by the great man. But this, this must be his turn. Straight at it, nearly in. That'll do. That's a good round of golf for Marco Mira. He hasn't played a lot in recent weeks injured but that's a fine 69 and to be honest I think he might have well settled for that before he went out in the context of this championship five under par third place and a nice man O'Meara to spend the most important day of your golfing life with a good companion on the course It is a shot drop, but who cares? Yeah. And there it is, Ian Baker Finch is the champion for 1991. 64-66 for the last two days. Tremendous golf. And now over to the home team, Jenny and daughter Haley. <laughs> Great day for Australia, first and second. Birkdale belongs to them. The winner of the gold medal, the champion golfer for the year with a score of 272, Ian Baker Finch. The Open Championship is, to me, the most special event in my life. And uh, just to play in it's a great thrill. To, to do well in it is fantastic, but to win it is a dream. Thank you.
you very much. I uh, can't really think of what to say except that uh, I've dreamt about this for a long time and uh, the pain of the other couple of times that I had a chance of doing it really uh, gave me the strength to go on and do it today. And it's a great feeling and uh, I'm going to cherish this trophy forever. I'd really like to thank all of the, the support that I've had from you all here, not only this week, but uh, over the last seven or eight years. Um, you've really, I've, I felt like you've really got behind me. Um, I hope now that I'm not a loser and that I'm a winner, you'll still stay behind me. Thank you very much. <laughs>